All right, what's up, people of YouTube? It's your boy, M. Lee, once again, here to talk to you guys about my recent video I shot at the lake. Um, before I even start that off, I want to tell you guys my camera settings again. You know, I'm still working with this bad boy, trying to, uh, you know, get accustomed to it and stuff like that. My camera settings right now is 2500 uh, ISO um, with custom picture profile number eight, which is the uh, high DR. Um, right now, I'm recording at 24 megabits per second instead of uh, 35 at uh, 29.97p, aka 30 frames per second. And, uh, oh, my microphone, I got it, I got the line in to the camera. Um, as far as me experimenting right now with this microphone setup, um, what I really wanna tell you guys is that it's best if you do not have the top handle plugged in while having an external uh, microphone that has a regular, um, you know, um, auxiliary jack. When you have one of these microphones, don't have the top handle plugged in. Even though you can adjust the uh, volume from the top handle, um, you're still going to get a whole bunch of noise. No matter what settings you choose in the menu, you're still going to get a whole lot of noise and stuff in the background. Even the mic uh, attenuation uh, setting, there's still a lot of noise. So what I had did was unplug the uh, top handle microphone and um, just left this plugged in, turned on mic attenuation, and uh, after that, it got real clean and stuff, so um, you still may hear a little bit of low frequency uh, uh, noise, but not too much at all. Nowhere near compared to what it was at first. At first, I had this microphone sitting on the table right next to me, right next to me on the mini tripod, but I realized with this type of setup, it's not good to have. It's good to have the microphone close as possible, so you can have the volume, you know, turned down as much as possible, or the mic uh, sensitivity turned down as much as possible. So. Um, yeah, right now I'm using my Rokinon 14 millimeter uh, lens. As you can see, I'm getting a wide angle. And, you know, my film vlogs, I'm going to start doing these different places. You know, it's not going to only be on the green screen. It's going to mostly be on the green screen, especially when I'm talking about uh, videos I've shot recently. It's going to pop them up on the green screen behind me. So um, let's go ahead and pop this video up. I give this video out of 10. I give it about maybe a seven or six and a half out of 10. I really like doing grade scores. So if I were to give it a grade score, I'd give it a C plus or a D or a B minus um, as far as how I shot it. Not really how I shot it, but just as far as the quality that I got from it, as far as my own personal skills going towards the video and stuff like that. I forgot some parts from my camera crane. So, you know, I couldn't get that many crane shots. I forgot the parts that hold the weights up and stuff like that and, you know, I'm still looking for those two metal pieces. I don't know where they at, but um, I forgot that. I forgot to use a regular HDMI cable for the screen because this has a regular HDMI cable input, not many HDMI. So I forgot that I need an actual full size cable. Um, I forgot to do a, a, a automatic black balance, which you know I'm still learning about that. So you see, somebody told me, uh, from a video I uh, heard that. It's good to do an automatic back black balance whenever you go into different locations to shoot and stuff like that. And then just recently I heard that it's good to do an automatic black balance if you're going past the native ISO, which is 850. So um, I should have did one no matter what, it, what, whatever the case may be, I should have did one because I noticed I some shots, especially when I filmed my son walking across the little log with his shoes. I was at ISO, I think... Um, 1600 or something like that with that shot or one or uh, 1200 1250 and um it was a lot of noise and then the first shot with the crane um coming down from the trees i realized the trees in the very background had a lot of like noise inside of it you know um i didn't really like that at all um i was like man so uh and then there's a lot of shots that's real clean and uh there's one shot that I actually liked, but then again, it had too much warmth inside of it from the actual white balance of the camera. I had it set to automatic the whole time. I'm gonna start messing with uh, manual white balance. I never really mess with white balance that much. I just leave it on auto automatic and then just whatever. You know, um, that day I was shooting cinema mode. The reason why I decided to shoot in cinema, uh, the cinema uh, preset is because I realized Compared to this preset, which a lot of people shoot in, the uh, H, uh, high DR, which is the one I always wanted to shoot in before I even got the camera because I liked the way it looked. But I realized with cinema, I was getting way less. I was getting way more dynamic range based upon the location I was shooting at. I was shooting at the lake. And then the first shot that I uh, set up on my tripod when I had zebras turned on, I had it set to uh, HDR, high, high dynamic range. 
and I was seeing a whole bunch of like it was like a whole lot of stuff that was blown out. As soon as I switched it to um, cinema, all those zebra lines went away and everything was like mostly balanced. Like it was like everything, the shadows was well lit, the bright areas was well lit. But then when I switched back to uh, high dynamic range, right back to the same thing. I had to, you know, adjust, cut the brightness down a little bit. So um, so I filmed it with uh, cinema log, cinema log and um, it looked real good. I like how that preset looks especially when people when i watch people youtube videos because it gives it like that little it gives the shadows that little ghosty feeling or a ghost not feeling but ghosty look to it to where it's like that movie look you know the movies like i remember when people first start filming with dslrs that little super crisp high contrast look was amazing but then when people start realizing that's that's how not that's not how a film looks it actually has less color less contrast and it has like a little ghosty type of look to it and that's actually how it makes it look like an actual movie so the cinema you can you can just record it like that and not grade anything you know just add a little bit of color a little bit of a uh, tiny bit of saturation or a tiny bit of sharpening and you can just record just from cinema log and it look like a movie because of how to how the way the colors look and stuff like that that you know that low um you don't have that much color at all, and it's just that little. It's, I don't know. I just it just has that. That's why it's called cinema. It has that movie look. Another thing I realized that the LCD, even though it's an OLED, real good, real clear, it was kind of hard to see in the sunlight. You know, um, I had to you know adjust it, make it a little bit more brighter and stuff like that. And even though even the EVF, you know, that was a little bit like it was kind of hard to see. It wasn't like bright enough for me for some reason. And I didn't want to have it too bright because, like they say, if you have your LCD screen too bright, it's going to mess it may mess you up, make you think that uh, things are overexposed and then you end up cutting your your uh, settings down too low and end up underexposing your image. But there's a lot of settings within the um, camera that allows you to really see how your image would look once you edit it. So when you adjust it from looking at the screen, it's actually you it allows you to um, adjust accordingly you know it's a lot of settings this is a whole lot of settings in the camera that allows you to uh, really get your settings right and really you know compensate for different shots so with this video I shot this video first on purpose there's a lot of bright areas trees ducks that's super bright white water reflecting off the I mean what about say water reflecting off the light light reflecting off the water um, all kind of stuff moving and stuff people in the background and all kind of ripples in the water and leaves falling off the trees this is uh, this is the reason why i want to shoot this video because this is a real challenging video to shoot not only for the videographer but for the camera there's a lot the camera really struggled on getting those ripples it didn't create no artifacts in the ripples and it got like all the details but i can tell that it was busting his ass to to see all those little ripples and stuff and you know it did a good job and the little leaves falling off the trees you can notice that real clear and stuff like that and just all the ducks and you know birds and stuff inside one area all moving around at the same time you guys don't understand with these digital cameras they got to process all that on the image it's not an actual film that that goes through and light shines through this actual you're capturing stuff onto a sensor that I got to read that stuff ultra fast. Now, since this was my first creative video that I did, I didn't want to do too much with it as far as the colors and stuff like that. I add a lot of warmth to the video just to bring it, you know, it, it, feel, it makes it look nice when you add that warmness to it. It kind of makes it look dreamy a little bit. Depends on how you uh, adjust the levels of uh, um, exposure and stuff like that. Shadows, midtones, and, you know, highlights. Speaking of shadows, mid-tone highlights, I also added some hard light, which I took out. You know, I was going to render it like that with the hard light preset inside there. It made it look freaking amazing. Like, it made it look like something super dreamy and, like, you guys would have loved it. I think you guys, if I, I should have rendered two separate videos, but I just didn't want to have it look like that because it was crushing the blacks. Whenever I add hard light or crisp, con crisp contrast, it crushed the blacks. And I know it's going to crush the blacks. I want it to so I can go into the color settings and raise up the shadows and it gives the shadows that like I said well, as far as the film it gives it that little ghosty type of look to it like that washed out type of look to the shadows and it actually makes it look like filmic and dreamy at the same time and then you got that warm I got I got the colors warm so that warm dreamy 
crush but also brung up shadows inside there at the same time it makes it look a certain kind of type of way and it was looking amazing but i had to take it out because inside certain shots i'm gonna pop this shot up with the duck right here inside the water the white uh duck and um on his chest it was super uh not super but it was just blown out you can see the little feathers the little fine details of the feathers i want you guys to really see the difference between my dslr versus this camera whenever when i put that hard light inside there all that was blown out and then once i, once I took it out because i was really stuck on that stuck on deciding if i want to put that effect in for like a good 30 45 minutes just going back and forth putting scenes next side by side to each other trying to determine damn like that it looks good but you know do i really then that's another thing i got i gotta think too when i'm going outside filming outdoor type stuff I got to determine to myself that I want it to look natural with natural colors like you will see on the Discovery Channel when they be filming like wildlife and stuff like that. Do I want it to look like that? Look real instead of having all these little warm colors to it, just make it look real natural. Then that's when you got to do color correction. Color grading is a different thing. It's color correction is when you making it match whatever your eye was seeing. Color correct color grading is when you just, you know, messing around with it trying to add something, trying to make it look a certain type of way autofocus i really relied on this autofocus inside bright sunlight it is a pain in the ass especially filming uh i don't know how it is to film on an actual production camera but as far as filming on a dslr it's a pain in the ass inside bright sunlight like it's so hard to sometimes judge focus and stuff because like it's just everything is just so bright and that's why a lot of us utilize screen uh hoods and stuff like that and you know viewfinders that you can put on your screen and things of that nature but um autofocus was doing an amazing job but like when all that light is hitting your face and you can't really you know and of course i got the electronic electronic viewfinder but as far as different angles i had the camera i can't always look through that so just to have that autofocus you know and i can rely on it it did a good job man i really i'm really really, really am proud of it and also canon came out with the canon 80 80d man if I still had the Canon T3i and never have upgraded to the 6D yet or this camera at all and I was about to get my next camera, I most definitely would pick up the 80D, you know, because that's kind of hard to say kind of fast. But um, it's looking like a real good camera, man. If I think if y'all using the T3i right now, that should be your next camera, especially if you're doing pictures and uh, video, 22 megapixels pictures, you know, um, time lapse stuff. You know, you, you can do inside there. You can do that with any camera these days. Um, but then it has this little attachment that has these servos that turn your focus wheel or turn your zoom uh, ring real smoothly and stuff like that. Um, it's like this little attachment thing. I don't know if it comes with it or not. You may have to buy that separate. You know how Canon is. Um, flip out LCD screen and stuff like that. I'm like, man, that's like the perfect upgrade from the T3i. Like if that camera would have came out a long time ago, I probably wouldn't have picked up the 6D. I wouldn't even cared about picking up the 6D. I would have got that camera. Um, and oh, that's another thing that made me like super shocked about it. Dual pixel autofocus. The same thing that this camera has, a dual pixel autofocus, that camera has it. I'm like, damn, I would have picked that up. You know, if I was upgrading from the T3i, that camera would have came out a long time ago and the price is real good. The price is right. You know, I think it's like what thirteen hundred for the body only, uh, fourteen something for one the, the fifty uh, whatever the fifty five, and then the one that's higher than the fifty five, the uh, that bundle is uh, like seventeen something. That's a good price. That's a real good price. You know, um, so if you upgrading, you need to upgrade. You wasn't thinking about upgrading. I recommend you upgrade. You know, because you get the dual pixel autofocus. That dual pixel autofocus is the truth. I'm going to tell you right now, from user experience, from me being inside bright sunlight, me holding the top handle, the hand grip, having it on my crane, on my tripod, just trusting, full, fully trusting the autofocus as long as I got it centered centered and screened. And I did a little trickery and stuff to make my subject be like off to the side the way I had it. You know, you, you, got, you just got to play around with it. And it's the truth, you know, especially if you're going to be filming outdoors a lot and you can't really, you know, get get real good focus right there on the spot and it's too, too bright for you it's the truth you know unless you're trying to do some kind of focus where you're focusing on the where you got the camera sitting still and you're focusing on the background and then the foreground and stuff like that and you're going back and forth then yeah you wouldn't use autofocus for that but as far as moving around and you're trying to get different shots and you're following some people that's walking or a parade or something dual pixel autofocus is freaking amazing but um 
with that said, man, it's going to conclude this vlog. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for leaving the feedback on the video if you watched it. And if you haven't watched it, check it out. Um, just It's just a little test. I forgot what f-stops I was using. So all I did was put whether it was ND filters turned on, whether it was, you know, handheld with the top handle or just regular handheld tripod um, and what lens I was using. So with that said, man, it's been your boy, Emily. Thank you guys for watching. I'm out. Peace.